an infinite solid metal cylinder having a, a, with radius A charge Q per meter measured along the path of the cylinder um, surrounded by a thick concentric solid metal shell okay I know radius A outer radius B the outer shell is grounded um, so there's no net charge on the outer shell i.e. the potential on the outer shell would be zero and the question is find the surface charge densities sigma uh, at uh, everywhere on each one of the surfaces hmm? okay let me draw this figure here yeah we have uh, okay and we have one here and one here okay let me draw this a little bit more suggestive here Okay, fair enough. So, uh, the radius of this is A. And then we have B. This is the shell here. The red one is the shell. B and C. Okay, and we have uh, charge Q. Oh, by the way, those are cylinders, not spheres. Okay, so uh, Q charge, Q per meter, with a charge Q per meter measured along the length of the cylinder. So if it's charge per meter, that's the, uh, that's the uh, lambda, which is the uh, line charge density or linear charge density. Okay, so basically there's a lambda on this guy here. Okay, so lambda equals Q per one meter. Uh, the outer shell is grounded, so that means uh, the potential here is zero. V at C equals zero. Okay, uh, we need the surface charge density at A, B, and C. Okay, yeah, so uh, you know how to do it, yeah? At A, we know what the charge is. Uh, the, uh, the surface charge density, by definition, is... Uh, by definition, it's the charge enclosed uh, or on the surface divided by the area. So uh, at A, how much charge we have? We have Q divided by uh, the area so that's uh, Q per meters so that's uh, basically lambda times one meter uh, divided by uh, because Q here would be lambda M in, in one meter so this would be lambda so the length is one so uh, if the length is 1, the area would be uh, 2 pi, uh, the radius, which is A, times the length, which is 1. So it will be 2 pi A, Q over 2 pi A. That's the surface charge on uh, at A. 
Let's call it smaller. That's what you got? Uh, Q and lambda are the same in this case because we are considering one meter length of the cylinder so there is no difference because uh, uh, per for every one meter you have Q coulombs so oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. so the ratio is one uh, the ratio oh, is Q regardless Uh, if the outer shell, if the outer cylinder is grounded, that means uh, the potential, the, all the charge drops to the ground. So there wouldn't be any charge, and therefore the potential would be zero at uh, uh, on the surface of the outer shell. Uh, I apologize here for my naming. Actually, let's uh, rather than changing the solution around, let's make this A. I made them just A, B, and C. So this would be the inner radius is B, the outer radius is C. Okay, so uh, so there's no R, so we can go in, in order A, B, C. Probably easier to keep track. So so basically, what's gonna happen here is. Uh, you have an induced charge um, uh, as a result of that um, uh, solid metal cylinder on the inner surface of the outer shell. The reason being is the electric field here in the shell is supposed to be zero. So if you were to take any Gaussian surface, you're supposed to, inc uh, a cylindrical Gaussian surface, you're supposed to include a charge of zero that's the only way the electric field can be zero and as a result you are going to induce charges on the inner surface of the shell uh, the inner surface of the uh, uh, shell in the amount of minus lambda and uh, that automatically tells you uh, what the surface charge will be on uh, on the on the uh, at B at radius B so therefore at radius B you're gonna have uh, now a minus Q or minus lambda whatever you like uh, it's per one meter it's the same thing lambda equals Q over 2 pi times the uh, radius of that inner surface so it's going to be the same different radius and a minus sign because that's an induced charge you get the idea oh i forgot the epsilon here uh, actually no never mind there's no epsilon the length is one so times one doesn't matter we're considering a length of one and that automatically tells you immediately what the charge is on the outer surface of that shell because if 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 there's no charge on the uh, outer shell because it's grounded uh, that means the charge on the on the red shell has to amount to zero so if you have a uh, if you have a plus lambda here or uh, sorry a minus q minus lambda so so this is so this here lambda equal q right uh, you're gonna have a plus q uh, on on this guy here so that when you add the enclosed charge you would get zero because there's no net charge. Grounded means there's no net charge. And that automatically tells you that sigma at radius C is Q over lambda, or Q or lambda, over the area of the cylinder, 2 pi C times 1. So these are the surface charge densities a different radio okay 
okay now we will find the potential at the center now uh, since this is a cylinder uh, and it's carrying a charge and the charge extends to infinity uh, I could not use my reference point to be at infinity because the potential there is not zero usually on a sphere configuration or a plane or a uh, finite sheet we can do that we can assume that the potential at infinity is zero because it's proportional to the radius and as the radius increases uh, the potentials with the potential withers away and it goes to zero however since this is a cylinder we can't do that what we can do is use the fact that, that at the surface of the conductor there's no potential so I could use uh, my C point to be the reference okay and so um, keeping that in mind I know so I'm gonna find the potential at the center now I know that uh, the potential at the center is equal minus the integral of uh, going from the reference okay the reference which I will call C here okay all the way to zero to r equals zero of edl electric field dot displacement which in this case will be uh, uh, so uh, i will call uh, how far i am from that cylinder as ds okay because there's symmetry Okay, now going from C to zero, we encounter different electric fields. So I will break up this integral. So we're gonna go from C to uh, second. We're gonna go from C to B, right, first. And what's the electric field? Well, the electric field inside that shell is zero because it's a conductor. So this is zero dl. So this goes away. Okay, minus. Now I'm gonna go from b to a. Okay, uh, and here I do have an electric field as I will calculate it now in a second using Gauss's law. We're using ds. Okay, and then I'm gonna go from, oops. A to zero. And what's the electric field there? Uh, well, uh, the electric field, if I were to take a Gaussian surface inside here, since the charge is all, a cylindrical Gaussian surface, the charge is all on the surface, this is a shell, the electric field will be zero because there is no charge enclosed. So this is again EDS, and this goes to zero one more time. Okay, let's find the electric field between A and B. I'm gonna consider a Gaussian surface uh, here between A and B, right? This is my Gaussian surface, and I'm gonna apply Gauss's law. that tells me EDA, closed integral of EDA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon. Now Q enclosed on that Gaussian surface, notice that uh, I am enclosing the, this is a cylindrical Gaussian surface by the way, so it's going out of the page and into the page all the way to infinity, but I will only consider my Gaussian surface to be of length L. So in other words, I'm taking a cylinder like this of length L and uh, the radius of this cylinder is R and R is in between A and B so R here for the Gaussian surface is between A and B okay so Q enclosed I will enclose the blue cylinder that's carrying a charge of Q so my charge will be the total Q that's on the blue uh, cylinder which is the same thing as lambda okay and uh, we know from symmetry if we have a cylinder we know that dA is pointing perpendicular to the surface so this is the normal vector n but also the electric field is also going to point in the same exact direction 
okay all around the surface okay so that means since those two vectors are going in the same direction the dot product between them uh, basically e will be uh, fixed always in that direction I could pull it outside the integral and the area an elemental area of that cylinder will be 2 pi uh, s or r I used I don't know why I used r let's use let's use s okay since we stuck to s there so this is s so this guy here is s right okay and so from here to here is s okay so uh, e2 pi uh, t e times 2 pi you could do the integral but it's just the area of that cylinder 2 pi times s where s is between a and b times l which is 1 because we are considering 1 meters okay and this is equal q enclosed over epsilon and that gives me my e this is the e between a and b to be uh, q is just we said q so this is q over 2 pi epsilon s and this is of course in the s direction okay so now i can plug this into the integral ds is in the s direction and the electric field is in the s direction so the dot product between them will turn out to be a magnitude so going back to my v0 there uh, first and last are zeros so i'm left a to b e is q over 4 pi epsilon s ds it's a simple uh, dot product between two vectors will give me the magnitude of the first which is q over 4 pi epsilon s that of the electric field times the magnitude of uh, uh, ds is just ds okay so integrating uh, this would be straightforward this is 1 over s ds which will give me ln so this will be minus q over 4 pi epsilon ln s from a to b and so v0 will be this is going to be uh, ln b minus ln a but since i have a minus sign i could switch them and so this is going to be q over 4 pi epsilon uh, ln a over b this is the potential at the center Uh, that concludes my presentation to this question and uh, figuring out surface charge densities on conductors using potentials evaluating electric fields to find potentials uh, at different points <clears throat>